Um, I I wondered, do we have quorum or I forget how many people are usually here. We have Zoom them, uh, which is whoever showed up for the usually. Zoom is is, uh, is uh, off the right and, people. Off and running, I think, yeah. Um, and and certainly, if another uh, person who cares a lot about what's going on shows up, we would bend and 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 figure that out. Did Bentley say if he was coming today? Or Bentley is he still is, traveling? Bentley is probably not going to make it. Uh, I got to meet Bentley in person last Did Friday. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, he and Max Harper were in town for some work they're doing. And uh, so it was great. We hung out for the evening on, on Friday. Oh, that's and, exciting. And like, like I was excited <laughs> to know that there are actually humans you can hug. It's good. <laughs> Very nice. It was good. So, he, so he's still in uh, travel mode and, and uh, I think won't be able to uh, be in this call. Oh, cool. Thanks for sharing the indoor air quality puzzle. Yeah, that's on our test site. So it still has to go through uh, one or two more rounds of edits. But it's, uh, you know, we're getting we're getting closer to the bullseye. Cool. Uh, so if anybody wants to check in with what you would like to do with this time of sense doing, please do so. Well, I always enjoy talking about a topic. We could just pick a new topic and just talk about it. We could indeed. I, I'm interested in talking about um, uh, the, the project, censoring project. Um, I, I think, I, I feel like we've never really resolved the question of whether we're working on uh, it, whether we're working on techniques for sense doing or sense doing um uh you know content picking a picking a topic and and sense doing i'd be interested in one of oh, i'm sorry you fin do you have well, more and and i and at the same time i'm not sure that we have i, I think we would at least need bentley here to have that discussion productively <clears throat> but i i um modulo uh and maybe this is uh, maybe this is a demonstration that that we're actually getting stuff done. But uh, um, modulo the policy keys uh, um, uh, air quality thing. Uh, I feel like we haven't really. I ha I feel like we haven't done a good job of setting up goals and getting to them or getting towards them, which is a little frustrating, I think. Um, and my own impression of our time here is that we're trying to sense do and leave a trail of artifacts of some sort that are hopefully sensible and sense made or whatever. Um, and rather than go meta and talk about the variety of tools or the spectrum or whatever else, but just and and the fact that we use policy keys was like awesome. There's a tool. There's somebody who who developed it, and let's go let's go nuts with that and see what what uh, that turns into. Um, and then I was I was hoping sort of to rotate to to other ways of doing this, but each time to leave behind some uh, some kinds of artifacts that uh, were that looked or smelled a little bit like sense doing, and that's just my own my own desires here. Um, anybody else? I, I I have a where I was hoping we would end up going on um, with some place in the middle, which was um, I I think <clears throat> I think practicing with. With a particular tool is a good thing, um, uh, and I'm also not I'm not interested in completely meta, you know. But I feel like we haven't defined what sense doing is, what sense making is, um, and we can't describe how to do sense making to somebody. Um, and that's that's where I was really interested um, is you know what is what is sense doing and how do you sense do. Um, and you know, I and then I can imagine that we're we we take particular tools or processes, and you know, here's our hypothesis. Um, I we don't have a, a theory of change, kind of. You know, here's our, you know, here's our hypothesis about what sense making is or sense doing. Even better, here's a tool. 
here's how this tool demonstrates or doesn't demonstrate our effectiveness in sense doing. Here's how it does or does not increase the, the sense doing that we can do. Um, I, I don't feel like that's completely meta. Um, how might we sense make? Um, but at, you know, it's at least, uh, so I guess I'm not interested in the theory of sense making, but I am interested in practical applications of sense making. And I'm less interested in just, just doing sense making and not practicalizing it um, as exhaust. So, so uh, a sense making artifact that we've created, I think sub optimizes for the sense doing lab um, because we made a little sense, great, that's awesome. But we, we didn't level up the, you know, the practical knowledge of how to do sense making. And, and I think I'm on the slightly slower front end of what you just described, meaning I, I really like what you just said. And my feeling is as OGM for three years now, and April was reminding me that yesterday, a year ago, she was in the Philippines, almost about to fly home. Pandemic was already in the air in Asia, et cetera, et cetera. So lockdown was imminent three years ago. Um, and so I feel like three years of OGM-ish, and we've done little sense doing of many kinds, at least collectively or collaboratively. And if we did that six times, I'm just picking a number, actively and busily, like 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 termites in a in a in a mound or whatever, and then looked up and went meta and said, okay, what lessons can we derive from this? Our efforts here at sense doing, sense making, and headed toward principles or practices of sense doing, which I think is a, a bit where you're heading. Like, what do we mean? You know, definition, principles, practices, anything like that. Um, I would love that. But it feels like anytime we get close to doing the sense doing and just leaving something on the ground, we step up and look up and go meta. And I'm and I, and I I'm totally into the lessons from this, and I want to do after action reviews. But to do after action reviews, it feels like we need more action. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and so, and then to the to that point, um, then we should do an after action review of our policy keys work last week. Now, which makes total sense to me. And and uh, brief, quick, useful AARs would be like I think very useful in this process. So. Other perspectives on where we are and what, or what our goals are? Yeah, I was just going to say that I would like one of two things, either to continue the conversation about air, air filtration, because I think there's more sense making that can be done, hoping that it would lead to a converse, you know, to, you know, what you're talking about, the sense making tools. And in my hopes is that eventually we find a way to weave both of those goals in and out, whether it's, you know, breaking off into groups and then coming back, you know, in general, where the people that are focused on the tools and the people having the conversation are at least using the same subject matter to do both so that there's some crossover. Thank you. Um, John, Joanna? Um, I'm not seeing that you guys are accomplishing anything in this. I'm sorry to say that, but I don't see what, what has anyone accomplished so far? I mean, the only thing we've accomplished is become more familiar with John's tool. Um, so I don't see like when you move on to the next topic, what did you accomplish this time and how is it going to translate to next time? The, the only thing that keeps popping in my mind today as of this, I wasn't thinking about this before in grade school. I was on a debate team and you had to learn both sides of the subject and you didn't know till the last minute which side you were on, you had to do it. And I felt like I got more sense doing from that than the last several weeks of doing this. Like, has anyone learned more about air filtration or has anyone learned tools that when you move on to the next subject that you could apply it to the next tool, um, to the next subject to, because you know to to make sense making out of the next thing like so maybe i'm just not seeing it but that's my opinion so sorry because i was so excited to do this with you guys i think you've stepped right into the after action review um and i'd like to hold that thought and come back to it if that's where we want to go but it, that that's it feels like my response to what you just said would be part of the after action review um john anything to add 
I mean, uh, if you want to do an after action review on the puzzle, I can pull it up on the screen and we can you know, look for errors and omissions. Um, let's wait on that for a sec, because um, I think we just, I think we'll, our after action review will probably reflect the whole process and not the specifics of the, of the thing. I just went into my brain and retrieved one version of what an AAR does, uh, which is what were the desired outcomes? What were the actual outcomes? Why were they different one from the other? And what did we learn? Uh, if you wish, we can sort of take that step through uh, an AAR or we can pick a different format. Let me pull up retrospective wiki real quick. Thanks. I, it looks fine, but. Um, I think the other aspect of an AAR is everyone can say any, anything to anyone about anything. I think that's um, the, or that's the red, that's the army's version of it. Um, I'm the, not sure. the private can talk to the general in so the, the same tone, the general talks to the private. So the cross rank conversation probably is true that anyone can say anything to anyone is probably not true because there's, there's gates and boundaries. Well, not out of level, of course. There's so, gates and boundaries of what's okay to within say. Within the norms, yeah, right. Um, and also like uh, there's a thing called the writer's workshop format where very intentionally the writer is taken out of the group and everybody talks about the work that was presented by the writer in yeah. order not to be saying this, the, the, whoever wrote this is the stupidest person who ever existed. You, you want to get that out of the realm of possibilities to create some safety. Yeah. Um, Pete, is there anything from retrospective planning that we want really. to add in? Okay. Nope. Uh, then, um, uh, uh, we'll make a Google Doc or a HackMD. Then if you want to do a HackMD, I'm, yeah, that'll, that'll work well. And then we can go through and just kind of answer these questions. Um, and it, I think, I think will be interestingly all over the map on what were the desired outcomes, just even, a, even as a starting point, which I think will tell us a lot. So. Um, so why don't we, while Pete is generating um, the HackMD doc, why doesn't anyone who'd like to start in on the first question? Thank you. Are we writing this or are we saying? Uh, I would say we're say taking it notes. Yeah, and and several of us will take notes in the in the HackMD. Um, okay. If you want to run ahead with all the questions and just, uh, I mean, Pete, are you going to copy paste the questions and just drop them in the HackMD? I will. Yeah. Thanks. So for me, I wanted to learn more about air filtration systems. And the actual outcome is I really didn't learn that much. So. Cool. Do you know, do you have any hunch about why those things were different? We didn't have, we didn't go deep enough into the discussion. Hey, um, uh, super helpful, Stacy. Thanks. I I hope I won't bend the format too much. Um, I trust you, Stacy, that you are not going to get rattled by. I, okay. So, so I have a question. Yes. Why did you? Why did? Why was that your expectation of uh, of where we would get to? Well, the word sense making means to me to make sense of something. So, and, so we kind of teed up the, the subject and then we didn't make any sense or very little sense. Right, because I didn't get, had I been able to hear more discussion, I would have generated more questions in my mind that I then could have asked that once they were answered, it starts making more and more sense. Yeah, cool, thanks. Anyone else, desired outcomes? Uh, so, so let me, let me talk out loud and try to reverse engineer where I think we kind of promised ourselves that we would go. Uh -huh. Um, uh, so, and, and so one of the things that I, I find, I guess maybe, maybe this exists on a Google doc and I'm, I'm just not good enough with Google docs to, to remember it. But one of the things that it's frustrating is that we don't have 
our goal written down already, right? I, I would have loved to have had our goal written down like three weeks ago or something like that. You know, um, so to, to kind of go back in time and, and try to remember what we talked about, one of the things we, we felt a little confused, like we weren't making forward progress. Um, John, I believe, made, the, made a good suggestion. It's like, well, how about if we, how about if one person brings a tool or a question or something like that? And we kind of dig into that um, and, you know, do sense making with that tool or around that tool or, or something like that. And so we kind of agreed that that would, that seemed like a productive use of our time that we would, you know, um, swarm around one person's, uh, you know, we call them the leader, the, you know, the facilitator, the questioner, the whatever. We would kind of swarm around that. Um, and then I don't feel like we ever really decided what <laughs> the swarming was supposed to, to accomplish. Um, uh, so, so then now, that, now if I kind of come back uh, forward in time to now, um, I feel like we did do a good job of proposing a tool. Um, and I feel like we um, did do a, a fair job of kind of exploring the tool. Um, because we don't, because we never set up goals, even sub goals for ourselves around, you know, what are we going to do with this tool and what are we going to learn and, and whatever, I feel like we didn't accomplish it. Um, so we accomplished milling around the, the tool um, and not, and, and to me, and, and there were some great outcomes from that. You know, I, I learned a little bit um, about policy keys, uh, got some great background information on uh, social, um, social process, political process, and things like that, just from talking with John in the process of, of working through stuff. Um, that was, you know, that, that solved a, you know, a separate personal goal that I have to understand the world better and to try to figure out how to make change more effectively. But that was not, you know, that wasn't part of the sense doing goal, um, even though there's a little bit of sense made there for, for me personally. Um, so I, I guess I, I have a really hard time saying that we understood our desired outcomes. And so I think we, you know, I think we didn't really accomplish our desired outcomes be because we didn't have any good stated outcomes. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just wanna say that was one misunderstanding right there. I thought we were swarming around a topic and you thought we were swarming around a tool. Actually a good, good point and thank you, Stacey. Um, I also understand us to be swarming around a topic. Um, so, so I had, a, I have a pretty clear recollection, recoll, recollection or remembering or understanding that, you know, we, we were swarming and milling around the topic of masking, um, you know, and then we kind of, we, we made a tiny bit of sense. It's like, well, maybe masking is actually kind of a subset of air quality, and maybe you could actually make more social change with air quality and whatever. Right. So we, we did, I feel like that was good sense making, even though it was in the midst of a lot of kind of, you know, milling around. And then I think to, to resolve that milling around feeling, we, we said, you know, let's focus down into one tool rather than just kind of like everybody's talking about everything about masking or air quality. So thank you, Stacey, you're, you're totally right. But I did have both of those in mind. unless you'd like to go, I'll jump in. Me, the one, did you say Joanne? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the one thing I want to say, so John's tool has, it's, it's great that he's got this tool and I could see so many good things for it. But I feel like if this is a group about sense building, the, the, once you have the tool, I feel like all the sense building is out of it. I feel like the sense building is coming up with the 16 pros and the 16 cons. And so um, I feel like we skipped over the sense building when it came to this group. Um, okay, maybe I don't have to speak up at all. Um, so uh, several different things. I was really happy with last, last week's call, even though it sort of was different from maybe all, what all of us expected. I don't know how we could have set up better goals because none of us really knew what policy key, keys was. And I said during the call that I've seen policy keys now four times, and I learned a 
metric shit ton about it during the call. Like a bunch of stuff that was not obvious to me whatsoever suddenly showed up and I'm like, oh, 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 okay. And that gave me a better idea of what John might do with it in the future and how it might apply to sense doing, et cetera, et cetera. I felt like I was watching the Betty Crocker cake already pulled out of the oven. I felt like the conversations you all had to come up with the 16 questions, yes and no's, uh, were the interesting part that I wanted to learn more about and would have fed Stacy, would have fed me. And in that process, I would have been madly taking notes in my own quirky fashion in the brain, but I was, I was really interested in which issues rise, which issues fall. And then the work with policy keys made me realize that one of John's magic gifts is depoliticizing difficult questions and picking a target that doesn't cause people to immediately freeze up and showing a gamut of yes and no's so that people don't jump to their default setting. And, and, and there's like three or four or five interesting things there about how policy keys tries to nurse people through the sense-making part of it, but it's not sense-making that policy keys is doing because the sense-making was done by him and his interns in creating the questions every single time. And if you're really lucky, and I don't know how policy keys does this, people taking policy keys and expressing their opinions in it might actually be able to go deeper into any of the questions and understand how that happened and maybe even participate in it, which would be mega super cool, but I'm not sure that that does it or that that's even the intended process. But, but the discovery of why I agree or disagree with things is to me also like a really, really interesting part of it. So you all know that I was interested in the masking topic, not filtration, but I knew much less about filtration, so I was looking forward to it. Um, I had seen John's tool, so I was eager to see that. I was kind of happy at the end of the call. And for me, the artifact of the, the policy keys template for IA indoor air quality was in fact a sense doing artifact of the kind I'm mentioning when I say, wouldn't it be great to leave a trail of artifact? So that made me happy. Um, now, it's a, it's, a, it's a puzzling different artifact from what I ever expected we would have. I had no idea that was gonna show up, but to me, that's great. And if we did that six times with different kinds of perspectives or, or different people, maybe even on the same topic. <laughs> I had a, an intermediate accounting course at, uh, at Wharton from a professor who was kind of a prima donna, and I should never have been in that course. I, I, I barely made it through basic accounting, and I don't know what caused me to take the intermediate course, but that professor used the same annual report from Stauffer Chemical Corporation for the midterm and the final. There was so much, such a treasure of misinformation and, and crap in that in that report that he used the same report. And I'm like, wow. And and I don't know how I how I managed to pass the course, but sometimes when you stay with the topic and sort of go deeper, we could learn a whole lot by staying on indoor air quality and filters and mandates and whatever else for a while. That would make me happy as well. If we never got back to masking and we did that thoroughly and well, I'd be a happy guy also. Um, but what I kind of want to leave behind is reflections on this process, the tools, the meta stuff that Pete's looking for. I'm, I'm eager to do all that kind of stuff, but I need more action, uh, more things dropped on the ground out of our process so that I can then go, oh, now I see a pattern and I'm starting to get some wisdom from the process and things like that. So that's kind of my, so, so my, I didn't have a lot of desired outcomes other than leaving something behind. And I had a vague idea that you all were going to do stuff. I was surprised when we got there that you all had done all the thinking. I was like, oh, I thought we were going to maybe come up with the 16 things. That, that's kind of my, my expectation coming into the call was that we would work together to figure out what those 16 or 32 things were. Um, and so I think they were different because you all took a different path from what, from what we expected, which is totally cool. Um, and I, I think we've learned a couple of things from it. Um, maybe I just, I said a couple of things that I've learned from it in my feedback right now. Pete. Uh, thanks, Dre. Um, let me share my screen. Um, and I, I typed some notes. Well, actually I haven't been typing notes. Uh, there aren't enough of us typing notes to have captured the, the notes up here, but, um, which is okay. Um, uh, but uh, you said two or three interesting things I want to kind of respond to. <clears throat> one of them is uh, you said something, well, one of them is you said something like, uh, I, I had you know, a good time or I'm happy that uh, or, or whatever. So I, 
I want to kind of acknowledge that and agree, you know, I've had, um, I've enjoyed my time with this group. I love, love you all, love talking, love learning stuff. So, you know, as, as a background goal, you know, I, I think we're doing good. Um, uh, you said, you said something like, um, we didn't know enough about policy keys to set a goal about policy keys. Um, I think that's, I, I, I wouldn't say it that way. And I think, so, so an easy, you know, an easy uh, goal that we could have set up is to learn more about policy keys. Um, and, you know, and, and then in, in projects and in collaborative work, um, uh, when the group, um, when the group doesn't set goals, and they accomplish things. You can kind of talk about it and you kind of get this general feel of like, well, I like doing this or I like doing this, but I'm frustrated because we always seem to be kind of like skittering around or I don't like this because it seems like we're always skittering around or whatever, right? Um, if you have, a, so a, maybe not even a sense-making tool, but a collaboration tool is a project plan and goals and things like that. And goals don't have to be, you know, we should write a 128 page paper on whether or not policy keys is effective and yada, yada, yada. You know, it doesn't have to be a very deep goal, right? Learn about more about policy keys would have been an amazing thing to have written down two weeks ago. And then, you know, come this, this meeting, we could go, wow, look, we accomplished a goal. We are like an amazing team. You know, we can set up a goal. We can accomplish a goal. This is an amazing thing. So that's what I'm missing. And, you know, it, it doesn't have to be any harder. Like it, it would have made our lives easier over the past couple of meetings to just even set up simple goals and to knock them down, you know, and, and the more you do of that, you know, the better you get at it. But the first couple are, should be easy and should be knocked downable. And then you go, wow, we're a team, you know, that's, that's how you go from, uh, you know, forming, norming is kind of a little bit of like project management. And then you get to the point where you're storming because you build a virtuous circle of, um, you know, setting up a shared goal and, and knocking it down as an accomplishment. And I, I, wanna, I wanna say, uh, maybe I'll write here even, um, it's not that, you know, I think each of us had goals coming into this, this um, experience. So it's not like we're not having personal goals and meeting our personal goals. Um, what I'm talking about is when we share our goals, we can talk a little bit and negotiate. You know, maybe somebody would say, oh, well, I have a goal of learn more about policy keys. We could go on a little bit further and realize that together, how about if we actually work together to set up a policy keys puzzle? That's the thing that I really want to do, right? That's like a, a little bit more complicated goal. And it's a goal that we could come to together as something, you know, some, some people might not be interested and they just want to learn about policy keys. Other people want to, want to dive really deep into policy keys. If we kind of like come to a leveled up shared goal, then that's a value add for everybody. And then we, we also get that experience of knocking down a, a goal together as a team. So, um, so, so then, you know, we could have set up this as a, as a goal too. Um, and, you know, clearly Jerry, you've got this one, like, and, and you've said it a couple of times and it's a, you know, and it's going to be a thing that we accomplish. Uh, so in, today's project check-in, you know, we would say, you know, this is, uh, we're, we're, this is a green, you know, a green thing. Uh, it's a green light still. Uh, it's not accomplished, but we're on track to accomplish it. John's going to push this out the door pretty soon. As soon as he pushes it out the door and we all make blog posts about it, well, let's come back and check this one, you know. So this is actually a, a, a fairly tricky one maybe to do, a more complicated one, but we're going to accomplish it even though we didn't set ourselves as a goal. The, the thing that we're missing is, uh, you know, what kind of artifact is that? Um, uh, is uh, the topic of indoor air quality the right one? Um, uh, you know, I, so uh, the, one of the things you were frustrated by was that, so, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking a little bit in circles here. Um, 
coming back to work together to set up a policy is key puzzle. This is this is something where um, Joanne and John and I, when we were off doing homework, uh, we kind of knew this was in the air, even though it wasn't written down. Um, we had to guess what was the most effective thing that the team could do. So this is another place where if as a team, we had set up some goals, maybe talk a little bit about policy keys so we would know how to make a goal for it. Um, we could have, you know, we could have done our homework to make it so that it would be easy to work together to set up a policy keys puzzle. I think setting up this as a goal is a little bit, it's a, this is a not, this is not quite an effective goal. It's a little bit defective. Um, John and Joanne and I, I remember pretty, pretty carefully, we thought we were doing a good job of, you know, we kind of guessed that something like this was a goal. Uh, we didn't really talk about it explicitly, but we all kind of talked about, so, you know, Monday is going to happen, what, what's going to go on. Um, <clears throat> we actually tried to set up the puzzle so that it would be easy to, I guess, I guess we were, I remember talking about this as a potential goal. Let's just fill in a, a little bit of it and then do the, the work of sense making afterwards. Um, I think we kind of end up falling back on this. Why don't we make a, a, a why don't we set it up really well? And then, and then the team will be able to learn a lot about policy keys in the process of kind of going through the homework that we did and talking about the tool and all that kind of stuff. So long, long story short, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm drilling in on what I think shared goals are and why they, they are useful. And, and I think that we can do that as a team. And I think if we don't do that as a team, we're going to continue to miss expectations. We're gonna have not shared expectations and we're not going to reach our, our you know, lack of shared expectations. Thanks. Uh, Joanne, did you have your hand, your hand up? I did. Um, so I just want to say that, so um, I thought the work that Peter and I did with John was really good and it to bad everybody wasn't there for it. Um, I went in a little bit naive. I didn't know much about policy keys and I thought what Peter and I were going to do with John, we, one night Peter and I got together and did a whole bunch of pros and cons. And I thought we were going to present all the pros and cons we came up with in 16 to the group to kind of go through them. And John from that, took it and made the puzzle up because he's got a lot of experience doing it. And I don't understand why he didn't pick some of the things we proposed as the pros and cons and why he, so, so the end result, so I guess I went in thinking that our work with John was to see what ingredients we needed to get together and we'd present the ingredients to the group and then we'd all make the cake. And I feel like what Jerry said, the cake was already made. So, and I'm not trying to diss John at all because I think he's so used to doing the policy keys and he's really good at it and it's an amazing tool. But I think if this group is sense making, we need to be more behind the scenes. We need to, you know, maybe have the ingredients explained to us why we're using this, why the oven's gonna be on a certain time, why you're gonna whip versus beat and, and make the cake together. And so um, I, I think John's puzzles, when you look at them, the goal is to understand a topic or look at a topic without the political, ugh, you know, like you, you could look at pros and cons without feeling the whole, I'm on one side or I'm on the other side. And there's, but since this is a sense doing group, I thought we kind of jumped the gun, we kind of made the cake without, yeah. So I think I explained myself, I hope. Um, Stacey, you're muted. I wanted John to jump in because I saw him try to do it about three times so far this call. Um, okay. Um, one thing I heard earlier in the conversation was about tools. I think the analogy I want to use is that you can look at a hammer at, in, the, in the hardware store and admire it, but until you drive in some nails, you can't make an opinion on the hammer. So I don't really want to play with I don't want a tool needs a nail, you know. So last week, I had thought that it would be best to drive a nail in, and then we can drive another nail in, 
with a different angle or whatever. So um, I appreciate the comments that um, there were two ways to go about last week. And one was to, to do a puzzle already made. And the other one would be to do the 16 yeses and nos first. And I'm perfectly happy to do that another time with anybody else's puzzle. I mean, that's, that's what this tool does. And the, actually, the summary and the 16 yeses and nos is really the divergent part. And actually everything after that, I've got now that it's uh, a mechanical process. And it needs, it needs an editor. There has to be a human in the room doing it, but I have mechanical processes that uh, get it done. And uh, Joanne, you said something about, I, I think I, I, I tried to lovingly edit the yeses and nos uh, because I saw, what I've learned by now, because I've done a hundred of these, is that sometimes two really are the same. Yeah, and and they need to be combined, and and sometimes uh, one was a great idea, but it was a number seventeen, and it just doesn't quite make the cut because something else comes up. And it's like, oh my god, we forgot blank, you know, and then that all of a sudden that pushes the Bayesian yeah. sort down, and so I just try to do like a loving edit on that. I'm not trying to steer it or put my thumb on the scale. I'm just I'm just trying to get the biggest. span of yeses and nos that cover, um, I think I mentioned this before, a bit. I try to cover the emotion, the momentum, usually that's shown in money, interest, something interesting, and then time span, short and or long. And then by doing that, it makes all of the yeses and nos interestingly different instead of echoing. And I know uh, I was doing a puzzle earlier today and I found that I had like three yeses that were just echoes of the same one. So the puzzle wasn't done yet because I'm missing, obviously uh, they're taking up rent. They're taking up space. They need to move away. <laughs> Some other interesting thing needs to come in that uh, makes it more colorful. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Um, I was very happy with the way the puzzle came out. I mean, I, so I, I'm actually, I'm thrilled. I learned a lot. I mean, I didn't know a bunch of that stuff. Um, I like to say there's aha moments when you're doing the puzzles. And the aha moment for me in that puzzle was actually, um, we got off lucky with COVID because if that had been the uh, antivirus, the death rate's 36 out of 100, not one out of 200. Uh, we got off really lucky. And I think that might be the headline of this whole indoor air quality story is that whether that was nature, man-made, premeditated, whatever's been discussed about what happened to us, the next one could be any one of those three it would be a really good idea for venues where lots of people gather to have really good air quality. <laughs> that would be really a good idea and not even that expensive. I mean, yeah. I only think we're talking, I, I, well, that's another thing. What would that cost? That'd be a really interesting thing to find out for the puzzle. It would only cost, you know, 2.6 billion. Well, to the federal government, that's pennies, <laughs> right? That's not. <laughs> That's real money for a corporation, but that's not real money for a sovereign nation with a, a monopoly currency. I mean, there's ways to figure out how to do that. I think that's all I have to say. Go ahead, John. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize my hand was on. I just want to say that last week was really useful for learning about policy keys. Um, and it was really useful for that. But I think what I'm hearing from Jerry and Stacy is that we missed out on the whole sense building or getting to know the topic. And so I really appreciate last week just 
to get to know the whole sense building. I mean, uh, uh, John's puzzles um, um, and the process that went into it and what how he uses it and stuff. But but I don't sense. I feel like sense building in one sense was uh, skipped over for the group. John, what you were saying a moment ago about how fascinating you found the process of, of sorting out the yeses and notes, yeah. that's the thing you guys did without us. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing Stacy and I were really missing. Um, cool. Uh, any other angle for AAR? Anything else? Uh, why were the outcomes different? What was learned? Um, and Pete, I like what you said about goal setting, and I agree about very simple goals that you can that are can doable or do achievable, or I forgot what you coined there. It was, <laughs> it was sweet. Um, I like that a lot. And so, so um, one of the things that sort of worried me going into this conversation was that many of us, if I felt like many of us were really disappointed with the call or something like that, and I wasn't disappointed with the call, I just missed some of the outcome. And we could even dig back on that outcome and do it in a different way, and that'd be totally fine. But I, and, and I will add that the fact that the cake was baked meant that I learned some things about icing cakes and marketing cakes that I might not have gotten to had our whole conversation been about the technologies and methods of air filtration, indoor air filtration, which is also cool. Uh, you know, the, the, and in particular, John, the nuances of how you go through building the keys. And then one last thing maybe reflecting on this is, it feels to me, John, like, setting up a good policy keys puzzle is an art and that you are the main artist and i'm wondering if you've been able to train anybody else to solo on this because it really feels like an art well i have trained people to do it and yes it is an art um the uh but at the end of the day what was that guy from apple the marketing guy because uh, Kowinski, uh, no. Kawasaki. Kawasaki, Guy Kawasaki, Guy Kawasaki. Yeah, I think he said once, you know, I'm not all that intelligent, but man, I sure grind it out, don't I? <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of what the puzzles are, is grinding it out. Um, if you get the right question, the puzzle will make itself if you sit in the chair long enough. And then it's a matter of who you do it with. So, you know, with my interns, They'll come with, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a 10 minute sprint and we'll gather key yeses and nos and then we'll start sorting, sorting them and discussing it. And then the, uh, the layers of the onion keep, you know, it keeps on blossoming because uh, I had one, I had something blossom uh, two days ago. Uh, we're, I got a puzzle on uh, minimum standards to call yourself a news organization. And uh, well, I realized when I was scoring telecom that two of the biggest telecom companies are two of the six media companies that control 90% of all media sources in the country. Well, I knew which way to call telecom. <laughs> why, would, why would that even be a problem? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh -huh. But you don't, if you sit there long enough and you look at it in a one page format, these things just, they just, it, they just fly out of the puzzle. You go, well, what, who is that? And all of a sudden the answer comes up. So yes, I think there is some, uh, there is some artistry to it, but I don't think that I'm necessarily that unique. I think I just sit in the chair and grind it out. Uh, I, I guess I'll repeat what I said, which is, you may be unaware of how special the skill you have is to find the right question. If you had two or three trained people whom you have trusted to build 26 puzzles on their own without your intervention, and you loved their answers and their questions, I'd be like, you got it, it's trainable. If you don't have that, I still think it's your art because when you say you sit and grind it out, you know, you know the toothpick and the cake, you yeah. know when you pull it out that the cake is done. Yeah. That, that may not be intuitive to other people. Well, I have people who've done puzzles by themselves. They've not done 26 because they have day jobs. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about gearing up exactly that for this summer. Cool. With like hundreds of interns 
and then see which one out of 100 or five out of 100 or 10 out of 100 can actually do a accomplished puzzle. Once you've done one and it's accomplished, it's kind of like you're on the bike. You're not going to fall off the bike anymore. Okay, you, you still might be a little wobbly and you might not be as fast as everybody else, but I could ride a bike. Well, that's the point is that it's really, actually, that's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> Once the, I mean, we're calling part of this a depolarization process. Once you've done one puzzle, you're basically depolarized. Uh, it doesn't mean you still don't have biases. It just means that you're not like, they're always wrong. I'm always right. <laughs> I never listen to anything that they have to say. No, you're saying, wait, wait a minute. I need to get to the, their 32 reasons because there are good ones in there. I have to find them because there are. I mean, I've never done I've 100 puzzles. I've, actually, I have an easier time with the no's when I'm doing a puzzle than the yeses because I start with the no's. Because I want to know their argument first before I do the yeses. And, and there's, it occurs to me that there's a piece of this that's like steel manning. Uh, have you heard the term? I have. Yeah. So, uh, so straw man is let's put up something. Steel manning is when you understand your opponent's argument maybe almost better than they do. Yeah, because, that's uh, because you've done the research and you've sort of figured out what their arguments are and what's going on. So there's there's a really interesting part there, and it feels like yeah. it feels like some of the other tools we may turn to and the other methods we may turn to are could be feeders for the digestion process you just referred to that leads to understanding what the right questions are. Sorry, John, go ahead. Um, so, uh, I ever, two things. First, quickly, um, Stacy and Jerry seem to want to know, learn more about air filtration. And if there's a way we could do that, I'm all for that. Um, the thing I wanted to say was what I'd like to see happen or is the next time you guys go to a completely new topic for the sense building, I'd like to see people show up one day with some pros and cons and have the group together make the 16 pros and the 16 cons. And it's, I, I think you can't do it on mass or air because we kind of talked about like a brand new topic and, and have, I think that would be a sense-making activity for the group is to, to, do other people see the value of that? Like, like the, just a discussion of, you know, what are the pros, what are, the, we could throw, like if everybody shows up with like five pros, five cons, we could put them all on the board and we could look through, mm -hmm. these two are similar, these two are not, I hadn't thought about that. I think this is more important. And I think that would be a useful activity with a brand new topic is to have the group um, work through what are the 16 yeses, what are the 16 no's. And I think that that might, that'd be an interesting thing to see if you could do that with the group. And because John's already done this. He's already done this with his interns or his staff. and he knows, but I would imagine it'd be really useful or just, in, a, an interesting um, activity for this group to do. Um, I'll just add real quick that I think that's what Bentley was hoping to do because I had spoken to him, you know, earlier. And I think that was, you know, and he, when he was, when he mentioned early on that he thought maybe there were different goals for the group, I think he was hoping for more of that. So can we go back and do it with air filtration or not like we should pick a new topic? So I'm eager to have that discussion, but the reason I'm lukewarm is that I'm not eager to do another policy keys puzzle um, in this process right now. I think we should try a couple other methods or other ways of doing stuff. So the discussion that you're talking about, I totally want to know, but I don't want to be aiming for a certain number of yeses and a certain number of noes within this framework. Gary, all this time, every time you did this, I thought it was, I did not know this was lukewarm. I thought yeah. yes or no. I thought you were just not lifting your fingers and that's no, no, no. lukewarm. This, this is yes, I this totally, is no, this is meh. Oh, there were some times you were doing that. I thought it was a yes, so I've totally misunderstood you all I apologize. Time. No, 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 this is meh. I didn't, I I'll thought look that for was it twink, as, as, a, as a, twinkling. As opposed to laziness or palsy. Oh, I thought that was twinkling, like uh, you liked something, not meh. This is like. This is like. Yeah, like his fingers this up. Is no. This is uh, not so much. This is uh, not so sure. Oh, I thought it was twinkling. Sorry, there wasn't clarity there. <laughs> uh, so very happy to get very and, and I think like Stacy, very happy to stay on air filtration and go back into the stuff you already know because you've got a body of, of knowledge that that can can help us see through the topic very nicely. 
And, and, and I'm really interested in what the policy keys exercise helped me do was take a different perspective on the thing that was one of my original goals. And I think I said this, but we didn't write it down as a goal, but this was one of the things I was hoping would happen was the bubbling up of the priority of certain topics in within the within the domain of air uh, indoor air quality. Like what are the questions that float up high and what are the questions that seem to matter less as you start to understand the topic better? That's really interesting to me, but that's different from the process of coming up with the yeses and nos in a policy keys puzzle, which is why I don't want to get entrained. I personally don't want to be entrained again in creating a new policy keys on a different topic. Um, if that makes sense. Cool. Um, so we can. We, we're sort of not prepared to do that, although we could sort of do that ad hoc if we wanted to. We could also skip and talk about something else. We could also wrap the call early and then set this, or, or we could spend our time setting this up properly for next week uh, in a different way. Russ? There's, I, I, You're um, locally muted, Pete. Wow. Layer upon layer of mute. Uh, Stacy can hear me. I can hear. Oh, I, I hear you now. But when you first talked, I didn't hear a word. It's weird. Um. Uh. There's. Uh, I. I. I think we owe some part of the group of uh, since doing uh, some more work with the policy keys puzzle as it as it stands. I'm not sure what that is, or if we have the right group right now, or what. But. Um. I would suggest when the puzzle, when this puzzle posts, let's do what you said earlier, Pete, which is post it to our socials and so forth. And then I'm just imagining from what you just said, we could sort of backfill the process of getting to the logics with what we want to do next. Yeah. So, so I think that policy keys, it's funny, I was just thinking earlier, it feels like in those sketches of you draw two ovals, then you draw feathers, then suddenly you have an owl or an elf. Um, it felt like we jumped to like step three, just before step four. Um, and now we can, we have a chance to sort of do steps one and two also. Yeah. I'm reminded <laughs> about learning how to play chess. You can't learn how to play chess in one sitting. It takes a while. Like what's on Passant again? And how does the King Castle, Queenside Castle differ from, you know, there's, there's all these little, what's a fork, you know, and, um, I think with any of these tools, it's like the hammer in the store. We just you just have to play with them. And I'd be happy to play with some other people's tools. And it's a screwdriver, let's great, let's do that. Or it's a chainsaw, let's try that one, see what it does. So you take it out for a test drive. I'm not sure that you can and then you know when um when you hit your thumb with the hammer, you know not to do that again. I mean, sense making and sense doing, I mean, this stuff is complicated. You know, you can't, I, I call it, when I describe this to people, I call it, it's a circuit. Oh, any sense making is a circular process. You can try to make it linear, but it's it's circular. Because <laughs> you learn, you go in a direction and you learn something, you got to double back around and you, and you know, take a wrong turn, you got to go back the other way now. And you, so it's that messy, like that messy scribble in that one book. I think of it kind of like a little upward spiral if you're doing it right. Yeah, yeah, and right. That you're cycling back, but you're learning and you're sort of getting, you're making the thing better and you're shaking it into more sense as you iterate, but it's very iterative in the way you just said. Um, um, so shall we spend the rest of our time here planning next Monday's call in this way? Oh, like, um, feels like a good objective. I may or may not be here. I'll be in florida and i don't and, know what my wife's having me do and i just realized <laughs> i just realized i have jury duty monday tuesday next week so i will not be here because i have to actually actually actively be at the courthouse in person um and i don't two, I, I, yeah. I pardon two weeks from now then yeah so i think two weeks from now yeah, I'm just making sure. Yeah, 13th and 14th is my jury duty. And God willing, I don't get put on any juries. So two weeks from now, we'll work on the 20th of March. 
Um, and we should also plan something for next Monday. I mean, whatever you'd like to do. Um, or we can skip next Monday's call. I don't, whatever you want to do. What I heard from today's conversation was um, there's the process, the hammer, and there's the tools, it's the nail. And why don't we take that as a formula and just pick a tool, pick a, pick a subject, and then go for a test drive? I'm I'm thinking through something like that for the next session, and I'll come back to that after we hear from Joanne. I'm just wondering if we have half an hour, if people have on their schedule when I half hour cleared to be here, do you want to just talk about um, air filtration? I mean, Peter and I could to start answering Jerry and Stacy's questions or find out what they want to know about it because all you guys are talking about talking, but let's talk. You know, I'm I'm up for that with a tiny bit more planning. Like I'd love to do that. Um, okay. Uh, and so, Pete, you may be having the same conundrum, which is okay. So, what tools do we do we try to use for the next go around? At least that's where I'm a little stuck because I know I know exactly what tool I will be using. It's called the brain, um, and I'm I'm like I, I'm I'm already. Um, uh, a long time ago, when Tetris was popular, I remember trying to go to sleep one night, but seeing little Tetris cubes in, in my eyelids and going, oh, shit, I've played too much Tetris now. Um, sometimes I'll be in conversation and I'll see in my mind's eye where in my brain something should hang. I'll be like, oh, that's new information. And my happy, thirsty brain part goes, oh, I'm going to put it over here and I can see it. Luckily, I haven't yet had that same reaction of I better stop using the brain because now I've, I'm like overly addicted. Uh, but I've been having that a whole bunch in our in our brief sort of touches on the topic. So I'm eager to go do that. But then does that mean we do a big Miro board together? Does that mean we pull out um, some other sense making tool? And if so, is it like Rome? Uh, but none of us is a, is a happy Rome user. Do we just go into Obsidian, which several of us are very flu uh, fluid in? Uh, and do we create some logics in Obsidian, which means, by the way, figuring out how to use Obsidian in that way together, which could eat a call all by its little lonesome, I'm pretty sure, um, because we would have different approaches to it, but it would be really, to me, very interesting to figure out how to use Obsidian together to do that. Um, or do we use uh, other kinds of tools? And, and Pete, were you puzzling on that? Um, I, I, was, uh, I was trying to avoid puzzling on that. Perfect. But... But but that's a it, that's a great that's a great little tour right there. Um, I I am also wondering uh, have we decided to can have we decided? I, I wonder which loop we're in. Um, another tool talking about masks or indoor air quality or another topic. I'm on the same besides. topic, different tool. Yeah. I, I'm I mean, I'm interested in the first and second steps that we skipped over on the same topic, but I'm. As earlier, I'm flexible and can follow the group. You know, if we want to do something different, John. Um, I've I, sorry. I think I'm going to keep yeah. going. Um, another question I have, and I don't I don't remember us ever really talking about this. I had assumed that we were we were doing collaborative sense sense doing um, in this group, um, but maybe that's not true. Maybe we're just exploring uh, personal sense making or personal sense doing or something like that. Um, and I'm assuming that's an indirect comment on me using the brain, which is a single person, single player sense making tool, kind of, because the it's, only thing I can do is what, push out. Yeah, it's it's what makes me think about it. Um, uh, so I, I think it would be fun. Well, I just don't know, right? Um, so so if we're talking about personal sense making or sense making without without you know regard to personal or collaborative, then I think having a a whole call on the brain and how you use it to sense make and how other people might play with you or your frustration that other people can't play with you or whatever. I think that's totally in bounds, right? If it's if if we're specifically talking about collaborative sense doing, then then I think the brain is still because you've thought a lot about here's an amazing tool, you know, that I can use that I'm a great artist with, but I have, I get super frustrated when it falls off the cliff and I can't multiplayer with people. So both of those, I, I, and I don't have a preference really. Well, I do have a preference, but so, so then actually also you brought up a couple tools and ended with Obsidian. Um, I have seen more and more people 
I've, I'm starting to see people post. Uh, I was using Notion. I couldn't figure it out. Now I'm in Obsidian. I love it. Um, you're totally right. It takes a great deal of time to figure out how to do sense making collaboratively in Obsidian, but it's it's starting to coalesce more and more that Obsidian is a, a pretty amazing tool for that kind of stuff. So let, I think I can answer that in a couple different ways. One is um, I did a bunch of YouTube shorts um, about revitalizing cities, the, and these are sort of the YouTube shorts, um, and each of them is connected into. Uh, so this is a short where I do a 60 minute, uh, basically a plug for this TEDx talk by Jason Roberts, which is one of the, my favorite TEDx talks, et cetera, et cetera. I <clears throat> have then gone into Obsidian and created a page for each of these talks. And what I'm and my beef with the brain and a question that Harlan hasn't answered and doesn't seem to want to answer is, hey Harlan, could we make it so that when I create a thought in the brain and mark it a particular way, it launches, it opens a document in an editor other than this default editor, the notes editor that, that's built into the brain, which he just rewrote. So he has a lot of proprietary ownership over it. So that I can be editing in the brain. But in fact, what I'm doing is it's just another. Um, it's just another Markdown editor that manages to publish uh, files outside the brain to some other uh, source. And if that were true, and maybe even bidirectional, where if I'm in a certain uh, vault in Obsidian, it's automatically creating new, pay new linked pages in my brain, <clears throat> then my work in the brain is suddenly connected out to Markdown files on GitHub repos or IPFS or elsewhere. And that is a great leap forward, I think, for the brain and for my ability to collaborate with others the way you're, I think you're describing, Pete. Yep. So I'm happy to do this manually behind the scenes because that's my bridge to other people doing note-taking and things that are powerful like Obsidian in more of a community setting. Um, makes a ton of sense. Uh, you should... And we'll, we should pick this up in FJB in a couple hours. Um, you should tell Harlan, dude, <laughs> what makes Obsidian great is the plugin community and the API stuff. Um, you should spend it, like this much time, and then you'd you know you'd be able to compete. I know. Sorry, Joanne, we we interrupted you, or yeah. I interrupted you. I'm just so you guys are living in a world I don't live in. I just week after week we talk about stuff and we look at tools and discuss tools and you're still not talking about the topic and when I said we have half an hour let's just talk about air filtration if you guys want and then Jerry said um, I'm not prepared I you know I'm like but what about just talking about the subject I don't understand why we need tools like why can't we just talk about or is that is that not what you guys do maybe I should go off and talk to people who just want to talk about the subject and not talk about tools because like, are you guys, do you realize we've spent, I don't know how many weeks now and you still haven't talked about the subject. And so that's where I'm confused. It's like, so are, is your tools more important or this, do you guys want to sense build about a subject? Yes. Uh, um, you, you guys did talk about indoor air quality. You just didn't include us in the conversation. Right, that's why I'm saying now let's, oh, I totally agree. And we talked about that. We talked about that was Ooh. a mistake. Okay. And so right now I just said, let's, you want to just start talking about it now. And so like, that that's what we did with John was we just talked about it I and mean, we gave him like some pros and cons and we oh, wow. so what we did with John yeah. we just talked that's all we did with John was we just talked and then after that he did the you know we saw previous things 16 and 16 but basically what we did with John we didn't make the, the chart with him we didn't he did all that himself we talked with John that's all no, it was. Peter we Peter did no Peter sent me a document that had uh all the work you guys did, which right. was 80% it was just, of the yes and no's, I think. Right, and that's something we could do here too. <clears throat> but it's basically, yeah. and Peter and yeah. I did it, Peter and I did it just by talking. Yeah. Like literally Peter and I made the list by talking and then we met with John and we just talked. And so I'm used to being able to discuss the topic and not needing to spend a lot of time talking about tools. So that's, Maybe it's not a good fit for me then, or maybe I'm confused as to what the goal of this group is. So I think we were just indulging in a short tools conversation to do the thing you'd like to do. And I just wanted to air some of those things about the brain not being necessarily a solo exercise because I'm happy to go do the work to make it collaborative. And mm -hmm. then and then we were hoping to go back into the conversation. And, and one last thing I just realized is Pete, I hadn't thought about us using one of these calls 
focused around my use of the brain on a topic, but that hadn't struck me. And it's not a terrible idea because then I could share screen the whole time and we could just talk through and I could, I could be doing live editing uh, to the doc and then we could see where that goes. I'm totally happy to do that as well. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of prepped to do that on the topic of indoor air quality because from from our previous call, from our, our uh, February 13 call I created, air filters really reduce coronavirus spread. We haven't emphasized them enough. Businesses should focus on workplace air filtration, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you know, and, which was something I created for last week's call and, uh, and on from there, or actually two weeks ago. But I'm, I'm, I'm totally prepared to do that this way if that's the mm -hmm. way we'd like to do it. So Jerry, when you do that, do you just do you just listen to people? Like, do people like what we do with John? Do you just have a session where people talk about the subject, and you do behind the scenes work the way Peter and I talked to John about the subject, and he did the behind the scenes work of putting it in his puzzle? Yes, but it doesn't need to be behind the scenes. If I screen share while I'm note taking, right. then then you can say no, 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 no. That rephrase it this way, or that should go right. higher, or something like but that, I mean, which I'm thrilled about. But I mean, there's one editor, a bunch of people talking, one editor, and we could see what you're editing. Yeah, that would work. To me, to me, that's considered talking about the subject. I feel like previously today, we've just talked about tools or what, you know. Sounds great. One thing I didn't do was take the puzzle that you guys came up with last time and harvest the yeses and nos into my brain, which would be a simple starting point, but might actually confuse us a little bit. Because, because the way you create the questions for policy keys seems to me to be fine-tuned to some of the sub-goals of policy keys. Um, yeah. It doesn't, it isn't necessarily always the most important sort of, you know, everything looks flat. Uh, policy keys presents a flatland and says, hey, tell me what you think. Um, where I think having an opinion about the topic might might intentionally not create a flatland of, of how to approach the subject. Yeah. Yes, I, I just wanted to say, Joanne, I understand a thousand percent what you're saying. You know, I come here, just my goal is just to be supportive. So I'm not that invested in which way it goes. That being said, even when Jerry was talking about the tools, I was thinking, what about if we just had a conversation, but we invited a couple of people to bring their tool, not to even talk with us. They don't talk. They stay quiet and just do their thing. And then at the end, each one can show what they created from our conversation. This way the talkers do their thing, the creators do their thing, we're all together and happy in a community. And one time a couple of years ago in the early, middle, middle early era, in the Devonian era of OGM, we um, actually had a hoedown, which I should have just done much more often, but we did exactly that, Stacey. We had several people come in with different tools. Uh, we picked a topic, we only talked about it for like 20 minutes, and then we each did show and tell about what we had done with that topic. Uh, with our particular favorite tool. And it worked very nicely. And it was just the, the bare beginnings of what we should be doing lots, lots more of. And just to highlight, I particularly like that approach because you know we keep saying that, especially in technology or finance, there's so much like male energy. And I think that would open up space for more female energy. Even, even through men, <laughs> you know, I don't mean men or women. I'm with you. Um, so if we want to just talk about stuff, I could share my screen and go to that thought in my screen in my brain and take notes and you could correct me as we go, or we could proceed a slightly different way. What would you like to do? Well, maybe I could ask Stacy. Stacy, what do you you don't have a tool? I don't have a tool. So You'd be a good person at what do you want to know like what how do you see the air filter like if you want to know more about air filtration how do you propose so uh, i don't know if, forward? i don't know if this is useful but for me i'm always a question person so for me I, I would be making a list of questions that i still need answered so i do care about the costs because if i were making a decision cost is a factor to me mm -hmm. so that would be a question that i would put to be found, you know, something to still be discovered or information that was required, still needed. So even with that, that's a huge can of worms. Like when you talk about cost, if a company does air filtration and it cuts down and schools do air filtration. So the kids have fewer cases of respiratory viruses 
COVID and non-COVID. They bring fewer of them home to parents. A lot of parents get sick because their kids bring home. If the businesses do it, parents have fewer calls. Like it's so the cost. So you'd have to, I think, when you look at cost, which a lot of companies don't do, you look at reduced absenteeism. Um, if with COVID or some other stuff, you wind up in the hospital, you know, lower health insurance premiums, all that other stuff that um, it, it could keep going. Like the the savings could just snowball, but people don't always account for that. They just look at how much you have to lay out right now to get this well, air filtration up and running in my business or school. Even before that, like I sent in a freedom of information request to my town to find out like what building permits had been pulled to put in air filtration units, which by the way, they told me they could not give me, but they didn't remember any. But I don't even know, I would like to know how many, you know, like how, how, what's the word? How common are they in the first place? I, I, I know nothing. I don't know what the research says because I don't even know where there is air filtration happening. And one of the things with um, indoor air quality um, for the past 20 or 30 or 50 years or whatever, uh, we've been working towards LEED certification and stuff like that, green buildings. Um, a lot of the poorly designed, I think it were poorly thought out uh, indoor air quality um, directions has been to reduce uh, uh, exchange uh, with outside air. Um, because if you've cooled off the air inside, you don't want to bring a lot of hot air. You know, if you're air conditioning, you don't want to bring a lot of hot air and then have to cool that off. You'd rather just sit with your your cool air or vice versa in winter. You know, it's like we, we spend a lot of energy warming up this energy and carbon warming up this air. Let's just keep it instead of exchanging air. So there's a there's a, a thing that's happened, which is green air buildings. You know, people have been spending money on, on green air buildings and there's uh, social rewards, um, uh, governmental rewards uh, to incentivize that. Um, you can, you know, uh, so at the same time, nobody was really thinking about indoor air quality. So, uh, so it's not uncommon now to see uh, really high CO2 um, PPM uh, readings in green buildings because you know we, we cared about energy. We did not care about indoor air quality. Did I capture um, that properly in the sentence I just put in? Many designers recirculate air to preserve temperature but reduce air quality. Um, yeah. There's a hundred different I, I ways to would, phrase this. Was, is I that think adequate? I would say it a little bit differently. Um, okay. Green, uh, you know, the green air buildings um uh movement uh focused on on energy saving uh at the end and at the detriment of uh indoor air quality got it especially things like oxygen so so whether or not you've got viruses in the air um we're starting you know schools and and especially businesses are starting to suffocate their employees um uh, and it, it was actually shocking to Joanne and I when uh, a little bit, when you start to not have enough uh, CO2, the reason we, we measure CO2 is because it's a proxy for how much air you're breathing from other people and how much, many viruses you're getting from them. But it, it's also a, a, a seesaw, teeter, teeter totter with the amount of oxygen in a room. So um, outdoor air is about 460 ppm. Um, indoor air that's up to, you know, 700, 800 or something is still pretty good. Um, when you get up to 1500, you are starting to lose a fair amount of cognitive uh, function, um, like a dramatic amount, like 20 or 30%. It's, it's like a big deal. And yet 1500 is, is kind of what people think of as pretty good air still. And it's yeah. not uncommon to see it go up to 2000, 3000, 4000. Um, and you know, the, and the air and the the HVAC people are going. Yeah, we're saving you a ton of ton of money on energy. Wow, I can't believe what you just said. That's like that's incredible. So am I capturing this adequately? Uh, I haven't haven't been watching. And I, something you said, Stacy, was I, I felt like I was trying to go for an answer, and I'm not sure I got there. Um, another. So you you said 
you know, how, 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 um, how common is it to have indoor filtered air? Um, I, I think that's not been, it's, it just hasn't been a, a focus. People, you know, how common is it to heat your air? Very common. How, how common is it to air condition your air? Pretty common, um, except if you're in the right parts of California, you don't get air conditioning, um, which is really weird. Uh, um, how common is it that people care about particulate concentrations? Uh, you know, until COVID actually, uh, the, the thing that you were worried about in indoor air quality was particulates, uh, smoke, uh, like big smoke particles um, and uh, stuff coming out of uh, truck exhaust and stuff like that. Um, so it's, I don't think it's very common to filter that kind of stuff out in buildings. Obviously, you know, when they're pulling air in from outside, they, they do put a pretty good filter usually to, to keep it from coming in. But once it's indoors or you know, if you've got a restaurant or something and you, you don't care too much about the, the, the particulates. So then it wasn't until COVID and it wasn't until after COVID, like six months or 12 months, that people started really caring about aerosols in air. Um, uh, because it turns out, you know, everybody was worried about big smoke particles and they weren't worried about tiny smoke particles and tiny viruses. Uh, so it's, it's a completely new thing that we're doing. Uh, indoor air quality focused on aerosol sized um, particles. And, and a lot of the work that's been done, you wouldn't see in building, uh, building things. It's, uh, of course, the Rosenthal boxes were super, super successful in small, you know, small verticals. Uh, so if you had a, a school or something like that, um, it was pretty easy for you know, when everybody was cared about, about taking care of each other for coronavirus, it was pretty easy to have parents or alumni or something have a, an effort to, hey, let's all build a bunch of CR boxes. This is rough and ready kind of thing that we can do now to help, you know, help save everybody from this terrible disease. That happened a lot. And so we got a lot of CR boxes installed, um, but not tracked very well. Um, and it's it's still a fairly new thing, I think, for for architects and HVAC people to talk about indoor air quality um, in in any large sense. So I, I live in a condo building. I have an air conditioner, and I have one of those you know filter things. But but my so but my heat comes through vents. Is it possible to get filters for my vents? The, the air gets filtered before it gets put into the furnace, and then it's uncommon to filter it after it's been heated. It's just not designed that way. But, but you can cut a, you can actually cut a filter could, and just put it right under the uh, register. You could, yeah. yeah, you could hack, a, hack it, yeah. Because <clears throat> I'm wondering if my, and again, I have no clue. I'm wondering if my vents are connected to my neighbor's vents in any ways. Not typically. Peter, Peter and I lived, when we lived in DC, or out, just outside of DC for a year, we lived in a really nice apartment and our neighbor smoked. We had to seal off our vents because his smoke was coming in through our vents. So Peter and I do think that in some places, like hotels, we were about when we go travel now, we look for something that's not connected. Like we'd rather get a little Airbnb cottage somewhere that doesn't share indoor air because I think there are places, I don't know about Stacy's, but there are probably some units where you do share indoor air. I don't know what Stacy's looks like. Um, Stacy, if you worry about that, you could get either build a Corsi Rosenthal box or you could get a HEPA filter and put them in your room. Peter and I have filters because if we have somebody over, we just have them running um, for our own purposes. And we got them also ahead of time thinking uh, when COVID hit, if one of us got it, and the other one, we, we tried to keep the other person from getting it. There are families that were successful that if one person got COVID, um, people wore N95 masks indoors, they had to have the filters running and nobody else in the family got it, which typically a lot of times the whole family gets it. Um, but I would, um, one, another thing there might be, when Stacy was talking about cost, Belgium is, was the first country to mandate indoor air quality measuring CO2. You have to display the CO2, they have, um, and it can't be next to a door or window because you could get fresh air from that and kind of um, it fakes what, you know, further back in a room it would be. But there might be, I don't know if they've got statistics or if someone ran numbers there 
to push this. So it'd be interesting. I've, I've not looked at the numbers. I've looked at the reasons for eye filtration and what you could do and all that other stuff. But there might be stuff. There's a few other countries that have done it too. Um, so I probably had, I didn't write down all my questions, but I think Peter said you're at 1400, the CO2 level of 1400, the cognitive ability might go down 30%. I thought it was more like 40%. And there are some places, there was somebody who wanted to do something at a kid's library and they had a little CO2 meter. Peter and I have one too, a little CO2 reader that when we bring it, when we go to the dentist or something like that, and it was like 2,500 in the library. And at that point he says, I don't have, even have to talk to school about viruses. I could just talk about, uh, there's a really good Harvard study that came out and if at 1,400 CO2 levels, um, your cognitive function is down 40%. Could you imagine what it is at 2,600, you know? Um, um, and you think businesses and schools would want people to be functioning at, you know, on all cylinders. Is it a proper assertion to say that measuring CO2 concentration is a good proxy for viral air quality? That seems that's to be what, what people doing. are doing. People are, that's what people are doing because you can't measure if there's virus in there. But in it, right. and, <laughs> and another term you should know is air changes per hour. I think it's ACH, Peter. Air changes per hour is, is a phrase that often pops up when you're talking about inner air quality. Uh, quality. But yes, people right now are using CO2 meters to look, because when you're outside, even though you could catch COVID outside, if you're standing like a foot away from someone talking to them for 30 minutes, they have COVID, you're outside, you could catch COVID from them. You could probably catch COVID from them in 10 minutes. But, um, and the air quality outside would be like 400 and something. But it's still a lot better than if you're inside a room. But to answer Jerry's question, I think CO2 is what people are using as a proxy. And, and it, they're using it as a proxy, yeah. I, yeah. Another way to think of it is the CO2 measures how much of other people's air you're breathing. Um, Jerry, because, I think it's ACH. Uh, it's actually it ACPH or I, ACH, either one. Oh, okay, either one, okay. So I'm actually gonna do this. Yeah. Great. And that way I'll find it with either acronym. Yeah. John, go ahead. Um, Joanne and Peter, do you have a, a source with a chart that cognitive ability goes down as the, because I'd like to actually use that. Uh, There's a Harvard study. I, I think uh, I- Is that what it is from the Harvard study? Um, that's the thing I see um, referenced the most. Um, but we okay. could look after we get In, off the impact, phone, I'll have Peter. Yeah. Impacts of indoor air quality and cognitive function, that one. Um, let me find it again. It looks like that. Offhand, I don't remember the title. Um, and uh, here, I got it. Associations of cognitive function scores with carbon dioxide ventilation and volatile organic compounds. It no, is that's a from, different one. Yeah. Could you put okay, that in the I'll chat? Send, I'll send it to Peter and then he could. Do it, yeah. So, uh, do we have any data on how many changes per hour are good? Like, what's a what's a virtue line? Is and I'm I'm it, I'm so it I created interacts a thought. with. Um, uh, it interacts with what you mean by change. Um, if you are running the the air through a filter, mm -hmm. then it depends on how. How good the filter is, whether it's MERV 13 or, or HEPA, for instance. Oh, right. Um, uh, and then you can also mean air changes. How much out, outdoor air are you adding to the um, adding to the indoor air? So I I I'm not a I I don't know that really well, but I know it's it's not it's not an absolute number. You have to add a couple of other numbers in there too. Um, yep. So I created a thought called issues in designing indoor air filtration systems, under which I put how good a filter to use and what measures indicate proper air filtration. And <clears throat> um, this isn't beautiful logic, but it's it's I'm just trying to connect up some of the dots in uh, in the reasoning here. And how oh. good a filter to use connects back up to HEPA and MERV, which were thoughts I already had in my brain around air filters. So mo most of what you're seeing here existed before this call. So, 
So here's a bit of text from this. Thanks. And that that's actually, they pulled that from a, a preprint article. Yeah, I think there's no way to remove 100% of the air. Like it's air, you're, you're, kept, you're, you're scooping as much as you yeah. can. I remember a very long time ago, for some reason, getting a being in, in a lecture by a Kaiser Permanente facilities expert, might've been in an IFTF event. And he was talking about how they were moving toward bamboo flooring for various reasons of cost, texture, and, and sanitation. And also that they were, uh, he debated the, the, the virtues of air paths in a space. And apparently, like, I don't remember if it was up to down or down to up was preferable to having registers in the same spot on the floor or the ceiling or something like that, that, that through flow was healthier. Um, and that just stuck in my head, but I don't remember what his exact advice was. But I was like, oh, that, that sounds important. It, was, it, it reminds me, um, somebody did a study where they had, they, they built a couple CR boxes and deployed them in a room and put them in different places. And, and one of the obvious things, and I think they actually compared it with air purifiers to you know, commercial, like uh, Joanne and I, I put it in the chat, we have, um, uh, we have three actually, uh, they, they're about CR box size, but they're you know, hard plastic and they've got HEPA filters and a carbon filter to, to reduce odors and they're, they're fun, they're, but they're also 160 bucks each. Um, uh, but anyway, they had a they did a study where they compared uh, different air purifiers and CR boxes and where they put them, where you put them on the floor, where they put them up towards the ceiling. The one thing I remember is when you put them together, um, you get less, you know, less air changes than if you put them apart, because you 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 can clean the air right around the CR box if you're not circulating the air in the room at the same time. Uh, you're not cleaning all of the air in the room. You're just cleaning it kind of around the box. So. You put if you have two CR boxes, you put them at at op opposite sides of the room, and they you know they talk together kind of in the air, and that's what you want. Hmm. Um, I just sent Peter a link because I'm not uh, able to. And, and I posted it. Jordan. No, oh, this is a new link. Anyone? People often ask how many air. This is from Joey Fox. So somebody who's an HVAC expert, and he he tweets a lot. Like he gets he and he um, if he references a study, he'll actually link to study. So uh, here's one of his tweets from February 23rd of this year. People often ask how many air changes per hour are needed. The answer is air changes per hour is the wrong metric and it's not a one size fits all. And then he's got an article link that explains it. So I just sent that to Peter. Um, and so Joey Fox 85 on Twitter, he's got a wealth of information. And if I were just going to recommend one person hmm. um, to just, he, he, explains things so that everyday people could, could understand it. He, he links um, studies and articles that he talks about. And um, he's also talks about high UV, which is a totally separate thing. And that's, um, but anyway, so if Jerry asked about air changes per hour, that article might be um, a good article to read. Thank you. And that Twitter link goes off to a, a medium post that he's got, which awesome. I put in the chat too. And it's his article, yeah, so. Joanne, Joanne mentioning Joy Fox, I, I see that we're at time. Joanne mentioning Joy Fox reminds me that a big part of what I feel like is sense making, especially for emergent events, is identifying and understanding experts. Um, so talking to Joanne, you know, she can rattle off, you know, this person you can trust, whatever they say, this person often is good, but sometimes they're a little bit confusing or they misstate things. This person, anything they say is toxic, even though it sounds sweet, you know, yada, yada. Um, we've actually got a confusing situation right now. One of our, our specialists, uh, an air specialist from the UK, um, she's trying to make a point. Uh, another, another thing, by the way, is all these people who post really good information on Twitter, they get bombarded by all kinds of people trying to take them down. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's upsetting and sickening to see, um, mm -hmm. because if you're just trying to make the world a better place and tell people how to be healthy, they, they will shoot you down and some of them have to run away, you know, and, and it's scary. Anyway, uh, Trish, somebody, uh, Joanna, Green Ball. Able, she's, she's in the UK. Um, she's uh, a professor in Oxford. She's, okay, she's been posting great stuff and, um, yeah. yesterday or something she posted, 
uh, she's trying to to counter people who are essentially thinking of her as a mac mask maximalist that term didn't come up i don't think mm -hmm. but she you know she's like hey i'm trying to be sensible you know i'm not i'm not like crazy i'm not trying to tell everybody that we asked a mask everywhere every for all time and one of her random tweets was right now i'm in a coffee shop unmasked and Joan, you know, our, our heads both kind of exploded, like, <laughs> what is she doing, you know? Um, so one of, one, of the, one of the replies to that real quick was, do you trust the air there? Do, you know, to, and we need to know more, you know? Or have you gone over to the dark side, you know? Uh, so that's, it's still an open question. We don't know yet. Hmm. It, 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 it was for coffee and croissants. And there's a really good um, air quality scientist from Scripps in California who has, who's today is defending her because people are like, oh my gosh, she's to cross over to the dark side for what coffee and croissants. You know, some people have not, Peter and I have not eaten inside a restaurant since COVID started. And this person who's just an amazing air quality scientist at Scripps is trying to defend the person saying, look, at she's saying she's weighing out the pros and cons. Don't, you know, this is her choice. And, you know, please don't think she's this horrible person, but um, yeah. Um, Who's the Scripps person, John? Um, the Scripps person is uh, Kimberly Prather. Is that her name? Kim Prather. Yeah. And um, she's really, she's the one who's done studies. And she found out we live near the ocean, um, like we're about 15 minute drive. And she said that when the ocean water's bad after a storm, you're supposed to keep out of the ocean because there's bacteria in the ocean. She said, they, she's done tests. When the ocean water's bad, when they tell you the ocean water's bad, just stay away from the beach because the air quality is equally as bad. And before, her study or before studies like that, people hadn't made the connection that if the ocean water quality is really dangerous for you, so is the air right above it. Um, so she, um, and, and I'm not tired. To, it, it's not like, like people I know who watch Fox News, like Fox News is their God. And, and no matter what Fox News throws at them, they always trust them. I just want to say that over the years, I've just, you know, this person, there was someone who consistently, you know, seemed to say really good stuff. And then one day they said something and, and, after that, it's like you just like if someone suddenly turns and they're not saying stuff that's reliable anymore, because we have three and a half years of knowing whether or not looking back at what people have said, like, you know, are they alarmist for no reason? Are they alarmist? Are they, you know, um, you know, not giving out good advice? And, and if someone suddenly is going to start giving out bad advice and I previously I thought they're, they were reliable, I'll, I'll be happy to just say, OK, I'm not going to rely on them anymore. So Joey Fox is one of those people that he, Joey Fox, Dave Fox, he just really gives, seems to give to me, I, I haven't done the studies, I'm not, but I, when he talks about indoor air filtration and how much you need and all this other stuff, I, I think he's proven to be pretty reliable over the years since COVID started. And um, the, the person who had coffee and croissants, her thing, she's had some really good, she's talked about air masking. And she, a lot of people referred to her, her air masking um, research and threads and stuff. So, but there've been people that I thought were really good. And then after a while you're like, okay, they're not giving good advice anymore. And I just, there was one person in England and, and suddenly it's like, yeah, everybody's gonna get COVID, just accept it. And it's like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna value your opinion. Cause I, I don't, I think when you, anyway, this is a whole different topic. Um, I'm trying not to get COVID because I think COVID has been shown to stay in your body for a long time and we don't know. So if I could avoid it by wearing a mask and just getting takeout instead of eating in a restaurant, that's what I'm going to do. So I went off on a tangent, sorry. Peter, what was the name of that testing unit you like? Uh, we use an Aeronet for the, the CO2 monitor. Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's the one that you know all the geeks Airnet uses. Uh Aeronet, yeah. Air on net. Uh A R A N N E T four. Um it's uh it's made in in Europe someplace. Um it's it's a good unit. And it's about this size. We've actually brought it with us. Like when we when COVID's super high, we do air um, and del home delivery for stuff. And then when it gets lower and we bring it in, like I was curious when I, you know, COVID wasn't, everybody wasn't dying. I brought it in with us. So you could see stores, what the air quality is. And you notice at the back of the store, there's less CO2 changes. We bring it to the dentist because obviously you have to take your mask off at the dentist. And it's kind of 
we don't bring it with us that much anymore because COVID cases are, are lower or, but it's pretty small. People bring it on airplanes and it's amazing how dangerous the air is before takeoff and when you're landing, there's no air exchange and that should be illegal. I mean, seriously, it should. Because you're crammed like sardines and the air is super bad. Um, and I'm amazed that's legal. I mean, the airlines are would lobby to not change it or not, they wouldn't want to roll because it would cost them money. I love all this information, so thank you. <laughs> so Stacy, if you want, you could just, we could have like a separate, you know, you could call Peter and I could talk to you about this for like another hour or so. But um, it's, um, so I'm kind of, a, Peter and I, like we're, we're, we're Caltech dropouts. Um, but we're, we're science geeks. And so when COVID came, it's like, what is COVID and, and, you know, and everything about it. It's kind of like when they talk about the Higgs boson thing, it's like, what's Higgs boson? You know, I, I'm the kind of person who looks it up, you know, so I understand it. And it's not just COVID. And so I just kept up on it because it's your health. I mean, Peter and I haven't been sick in three years and we're feeling healthy. And we have relatives who lived a long time you know, my dad died, he's almost 93, and mentally he was all there. It's like, I'd like to be able to do that, you know? Um, so, <laughs> well, I, I think don't that's want... what I'm taking away from more than anything that one fact about the CO2 levels and cognitive function. I'm carrying that one with me. Yeah. But you did. so we talked about it last week that if you're driving your car and you've got on recirculate, just because either it's winter or summer, your CO2 level might be really bad. So maybe it's worth using up a little more gas to, to get, you know, fresh air because I mean, we've all been like in the car driving and we're sleeping and right. we can't figure out why. Window. Yeah. Roll down. I just dated myself. Yeah. You roll down the window. <laughs> yeah. 460 air conditioning. Roll yeah. down all four windows and drive 60. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you everybody. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that was great. But um, the one last thing I want to leave with, we were talking, I think it was John who said we were lucky because the the death for COVID, the I forget what the phrase is, the death rate is a lot lower than other diseases. The thing is, people keep saying there's going to be another pandemic and the death rate might be higher or it might do long-term damage or irreparable damage. Even if you're just sick for a month, it might, you know, like, and some of you are saying they've done studies, people's brains, hearts, lungs, there's like long-term damage in some people from COVID. And so if we did this air filtration thing, it would benefit us when the next pandemic came, like we could have not done the shutdown if we'd had proper air filtration. Think about that. If people knew about respirators, not just the cloth mask, if people had respirators and air filtration, we could have, we maybe would have had to shut down indoor dining and indoor bars, but otherwise we could have not shut down. And that would have been great for the economy. There would have been fewer deaths, um, fewer, you know, overloaded. How, how many people died because they couldn't get attention from doctors and nurses when they had a heart attack or a stroke, which was not COVID related. Like it's not just Peter and I don't want to have COVID. We also, if we have a stroke or a heart attack or break our leg or get in a car accident, we want, to have medical care who could take care of us and they're not inundated with COVID people. Yeah, I think that's the headline on this is it's, it's not, it's the next one. <laughs> and there's gonna be a next one. And it looks, um, I mean, I've been following the news and there's all these little outbreaks all over the world of these new viruses. And are they really gonna um, handle them properly? Maybe, maybe not. And maybe this was intentional. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I, it's, um, the, I think the headline is indoor air quality. I'm not sure there's a better answer at the moment. So wouldn't you rather not be sick? Like we just had a daughter who does the mask all the time and she's in grad school and she was sick last week and had to take most of the week off. People, Peter was saying that a lot of people he works with are sick and they can't do the things they'd planned, even if it's, you know, going to a wedding or, or meetings or something like that. I mean, wouldn't, if indoor air quality could mean you're sick less, less time off, less having to cancel your plans, wouldn't that be great? Even if it's just a cold, wouldn't that be fantastic to be sick less? 
I mean, we don't need this many coals. We don't need this much flue. It's like water quality. It's like, yeah, I like not getting sick from my water. I <laughs> wish I could not get sick from my air too. Yeah. Um, my apologies. My Zoom bonked twice and then I rebooted my local internet connection. I hope that's okay. I think I need to reboot my machine and we're well over time, but I don't mean to interrupt a good conversation. <clears throat> but I also, um, la last week or the week before, I put in the thought, hey, if water quality was a really important thing a couple of decades ago, maybe air quality is the new water quality. So to what you were saying just now. Um, and at some point, maybe the start of next week's call or the week after, since I won't be on next week's call, I'd love to go over what I, the notes I took uh, in my brain to see if they map to how you would arrange what you were saying and then maybe do a little prioritizing or something like that. Because partly I'm trying to figure out what are the top level questions somebody would bump into early to sort of find their way in to the issue, and, which is contrary to what I think John is doing with policy keys, because you're, you have a particular goal, approach, and means for diffusing the issue uh, by saying, hey, look, here's, 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 the whole, here's the whole range of things. Find your way through by answering specific questions. And I'm, I'm sort of doing a different thing with a different tool, I think. No, yeah, I'm trying to take very deep dives on very thin shafts, <laughs> right? So what I picked up from this conversation the last half hour, 45 minutes was um, maybe a companion puzzle about air quality, but not for viruses, but just for overall uh, health and productivity. Because the United States is a kind of country that if, if we could prove that it would increase productivity in the workforce by 20%, it'd be done tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> there, well, there wouldn't be any discussions going on. It would be just done tomorrow. And, and then that's a proxy. That's, that, that's better than trying to convince someone to do it for viruses. <laughs> right. And if you, if you could show parents that if your kid takes the SAT in a room with poor air quality versus in a room with fresh air, they score a lot higher in the fresh air room than it wouldn't, wouldn't parents be screaming to get good air quality in schools? I mean, you know, they pay thousands of dollars to have people tutor them in SATs. I mean, yeah. It seems like an entry vector also is maybe European lead specs, um, because if they're already paying attention to this, then the lead specs may already include air quality and other sorts of things, which would be great to point to. And if they, and I know that you go to Norway or Germany and those houses seal tight. And the reason that they have lower heat bills is that they're really well sealed. And if they're not doing air well, then woof, the health implications are, are pretty huge. Um, so that might be a vector in. Um, I'm happy to leave you all in the room. I'm, I need to go prep some lunch so that I've eaten something before the next call starts, which I'll see Pete on and maybe yeah, Stacy. I think we should do lunch too. I have to feed the yeah. dog. <laughs> see, even the dog's got to eat. Thanks, all. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have fun. Thanks. Bye bye.